hey guys welcome back to the channel i hope you guys are doing well so today i wanted to do a video on the books i had to read this semester for school so these are only books that were assigned to me and i want to preface this by saying that this is not all the reading i did at all for school <laughs> but i'm only including the books that were assigned to me for each of my classes also i should note that i'm not including any research articles maybe for the next round i will or if people are interested in that i will do a separate video because i read a lot of scholarly journal articles and stuff like that for class you know for any given class i took three classes and for one class i read anywhere from i don't know two to five articles and that was per week so there was a ton this video would just be too long but it's i told you guys in my uh grad school in my life update when i was talking about grad school and starting my phd program that i wanted to do more education type videos and this is one of the videos that i want to start doing i think this will be a good way for me to look back and hopefully see growth um, and change as i matriculate through this program um, but also a good way for me to kind of see what things were assigned to me and just kind of have kind of an online journal of my thoughts on those things so this is everything that I read and I'm just going to go in order of my classes. So one of the first classes I took as a doc student um, is a qualitative methods class. Now qualitative methods is definitely new to me, but I took uh, qualitative methods one and there were two books that were assigned to me for the class. The first one is qualitative research design and interactive approach. This is the third edition and is by Joseph A. Maxwell. This is the book here. As you can see, it's smaller, but it is packed full of a ton of stuff. This book is, I don't know if anybody would be interested in that. Not including references, it's about 200 pages, I believe. Um, I did really enjoy this book. It was really helpful. Um, this book, I will say, read a little bit more uh very academic jargon <laughs> and i know you're probably like all of these books were assigned to you for class yeah but not all of them read that particular way but this one definitely did and so i think the next book that they uh assigned to us was really good because these books really complemented each other so so well and they just taught me so much in addition to lectures and stuff like that about qualitative methods they're books that i'm going to keep in my personal library um and they're books that i highly recommend so um, yeah, this was the first one right here and I did enjoy that one, but I enjoyed this one more. And this one is the quality, this one is called Qualitative Inquiry and Research Design, Choosing Among Five Approaches. It's in its fourth edition. And this one is by John W. Cresswell and Cheryl N. Poff. And this book is so highly cited in um, higher education literature in particular just most studies that have anything to do with qualitative methods have cited this book in some way this book is highly cited Cresswell in particular um, I don't know a ton about uh, Cheryl N. Poff but Cresswell in particular is highly cited very well known and this book is written extremely well I feel like it kind of takes the different ideas about qualitative methods and really breaks it down to give you some ideas this book is broken down into different chapters for instance it starts with which i really appreciate it starts with like the purpose and the rationale for the book um defining qualitative methods this book i think it's just it really was very good for someone getting into qualitative methods for the person that doesn't know a lot about qualitative methods for me as a researcher i have been in, the, in my past in terms of my academic career i have been extremely all quantitative methods um, but moving forward and by the time I finish this program you know when I finish I would like to be a mixed methods researcher um, I would like to be knowledgeable about both methods both ways of doing things because I don't think one is better than the other if you're watching this and you're in the academic world and you do we can agree to disagree <laughs> but I personally don't um, and it, this was just really helpful for me because I think also there's such a shift mentally that happens with qualitative methods and that's one of the things that I experienced personally this semester in dealing with qualitative methods is I really had to change my my way of thinking um, and so yeah the qualitative methods it was just a really good class for me my first semester but I enjoyed this book more but both of these books were great and I did actually enjoy both of the books so and I am going to be keeping those. 
Then another class that I took was a foundation type class um, in higher education. And so it really was a, a kind of a class that did like a really quick broad overview over a ton of different things within higher education specifically um, from the social perspectives on higher education to the economic perspectives to the behavioral perspective student perspective and that kind of thing and he actually only assigned one book because every week we had a ton of readings based on which perspective it was so most of our readings were heavily scholarly articles and things like that but the one book that he did assign for the class is lesson plan an agenda for change in american higher education william g bowen and michael s yes michael s McPherson. Now I'm going to preface this by saying that I like this book. When I read this book I was in the thick of being extremely sick. So this is actually a book I would like to sit down and take my time and read again before I say like oh I love this book or you know because I just feel like when I read it I was trying to get it done for class. I had a ton of assignments around this book and I had a huge paper to do surrounding this book. So um, I was trying to get it read for class so that I could get my assignments done. But I was extremely ill um, during the time that I read this book. And even though it's a short book, it's, um, it packs a lot. This book does not claim to be some all-encompassing, all-comprehensive, this is what's wrong in higher education and this is how we fix it. Um, but it does claim that it's going to take you through some of the problems that we're facing in higher education and some things that can be helpful, recognizing that the problems in the education system in America are not things that can be solved with single solutions, you know, and that is just the case in higher education or K through 12. I don't think they're single solution problems. And so I appreciated this book. I would like to read this book again and really take my time. Does that make sense? Like I liked it, but I feel like maybe if I read it again, I'll get more out of it because I really was reading it to get it done so that I could do my work. And I feel like I would like to go through and kind of digest it more. So that was that book. And then the last, yeah, the last class I actually have three books for that class and that was my student and clientele's class which um was one of my favorite classes but my research interests really deal heavily with that large umbrella of um of things no that's not right it's late oh my god i probably need to edit this out my research that i'm interested in currently really deals and really is up under the umbrella of students as clientele in higher education so anyway <laughs> there were two books that were well all of these books were assigned to me but these were the two main textbooks for the class and then also for the class all of us had to pick a book off of this predetermined list of like 25 30 books and then we had to pick that book and read it and then do a critical book review for the class and there were specific things we had to talk about so I actually start with this one I I'm gonna start by saying I absolutely love this book this was a book that I had my eye on and then when I saw it was on the list I was like oh I could read it for class but I also want to read it for myself so it just knocked it out this is the brother called manhood and masculinity among african-american males in college um, by T Alon Dancy the second First of all, you guys, the foreword is by Mark Lamont Hill. Hello. And the afterword is by M. Christopher Brown II. I absolutely loved this book. There was so much. This book is just so packed with so much knowledge and wisdom and research about African American males and higher education. And I think that's a really important topic. Um, and I think it's a topic that's not discussed in the way it's discussed here. I feel like a lot of times it's discussed from a deficit approach. And while I do think that this book does deal with that, it also talks about it in a lot of different ways. One of the things that I appreciate about this book is that this book really traces what it has meant to be an African American male in the United States across time. And then how that has affected what it means to be an African-American male in college and what that looks like on campuses regardless to the type of campus. So it deals heavily with um, PWIs, but it also um, deals with HBCUs as well. So I just really appreciated that. This book taught me a lot. This book put me through the ringer in terms of emotions. This is one of my passion areas. This is one of my research areas in terms of African-American males 
in college and really understanding what this population needs not to get super researchy but this is a population that is very disengaged in, in the American higher education system and how do we begin to engage this population I think that starts with knowledge and this book is just so well written and side note I actually thought I was gonna meet the author um, at Ash which is a pretty popular actually it's probably the most prestigious higher education conference but he wasn't there and I was also sick but if he is at Ash next year I cannot like I can't wait to meet him but I love this book so much it sticks with me I can't stop thinking about it it is if I had to pick one book out of all of these which even though I want to pick at least two this would be the number one best book that I read in my first semester as a doc student so many good things I tabbed this book up I annotated in this book so much it was just so good like it was just so good like just off subject but just listen to this really quick at one point it says the role of manhood in college engagement they, he says the knowledge that african-american males potentially enter college with an oppositional identity has implications for colleges who seek to engage and retain them let's talk about it like mm. Like I said, passion area, you know, so this was this book was absolutely phenomenal. And I think that it it does exactly what it says that it's going to do. And I think that this was missing from the literature. It feels a very important gap in the literature. And it was just amazing. I'm so glad I finally read it. <laughs> okay. And then the next book, which I also enjoyed almost as much as this book, is um Student Engagement in Higher Education, Theoretical Perspectives and Practical Approaches for Diverse population Populations is in the second edition and it is uh, edited by um, Dr. Quay and Dr. Harper, who are both pretty well known in higher education as well. I actually met Dr. Harper at Ash, so that was awesome. Um, but this book was amazing. It's broken down into a lot of different chapters, all dealing with diverse populations and it's talking about how do we engage these different populations and start with what do we know about this population and then it kind of moves into you know the theory and the research on this population and then it also talks about practical applications how can we put this into practice so I think that this is also a great book for anybody who's interested in student engagement engagement in diverse populations I think this is also a great book for uh, practitioners as well as college professors honestly to read because it is written so well I don't think that you necessarily need to be somebody who's in the world of higher education to understand this book because it's written in a way where I think that it can be digested by a lot of different people you know regardless to how much you know about these different subjects and just to give you an idea also you guys this book is like <laughs> marked and annotated and highlighted all the way up um just to give you an idea um, can you guys see that like it is marked up I enjoyed it so enjoyed it So yeah, I really enjoyed this book. Um, to give you an idea, chapter one is making engagement equitable for students in higher education. Number two, engaging students of color. Chapter three, engaging undergraduate women of color. Uh, chapter four, engaging college men of color. Like it just, I just appreciated this book so much and I enjoyed it. I learned so much. This book sparked my curiosity and a lot of other things. Um, and it just really made clear to me how important engagement is in higher education and my my personal interest in engagement. So I absolutely love this book. And this was one of the best ones that I read this semester for, for classes. And then the final book that I read for that class is College Students in the United States, Characteristics, Experiences, and Outcomes by um, Kristen A. Wren and Robert D. Reason. This book is also well written real well written I feel like this semester I really did have good books and thank God because it was my first semester um and I did I feel like I really had good books because I really enjoyed the books that were picked out I also think these two books complement each other fairly well um because this book is really doing a very brief overview of college students in the United States you know and talking about their characteristics their experiences and their outcomes and then this one is getting a little bit deeper and we're talking about how do we engage these students and they were actually really nice to read um, together in the same semester this book I did really enjoy I did enjoy the other book a little bit more but this book is great 
um, all of these books will be kept in my personal library. This book is broken down. If you're familiar with um, Alexander Aston's IEO model, this book is broken down in that way, which is something that I appreciated because um, it's a model that I've learned a lot about and it's a model that I think is really important to higher education. And so this book is broken down part one inputs, uh, part two environments, and then part three outcomes. So really enjoyed this. Um, I hope this video was interesting in the least, <laughs> um, if nothing else, entertainment to just me, see me excited about my first semester. I will say I'm glad it's over. It was, it was intense. It was hard, but, um, it was amazing. And I'm just so excited to continue on my program. It seems like I've waited a long time to get here and I'm just really excited to be here. And, um, yeah, I, I'm just, I'm at a good place in my life right now. And, uh, I feel really blessed to be doing what I love. Um, so if anything, if you guys have any questions for me, concerns, or if you just want to chat with me about anything that I said in the video or my first semester in any way, um, feel free to do that. Um, and yeah, I'm hoping that this will be something that I will do every semester, just a semester wrap up of what I read. Also, let me know if you have thoughts on if you're interested in hearing the journal articles I've read or if you're like, hey, that's getting a little too deep into academic, academic life because I understand that as well. And I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for your time and for watching.